again. Chapter. No. So on Friday, when we talked about mollusks, what did mollusk mean? Mollusca. What does that mean? Not head and foot. What did you say? Soft body. So every single group that we talked about um, has a soft body. Um, there were three groups of mollusks. There was the gastropods, which were the snails and slugs. Okay? And the snails, of course, had a shell. The slugs don't. Which um, the ones were just like hidden bodies? Uh, you're, uh, so you're thinking of the cephalopods. Oh, yeah. Because cephal means head, pod means foot. What? Was that uh, you have the same groups. So all of these, there are three different classes of mollusks. The, the snails and slugs were the gastropods. The cephalopods, which he's talking about, were the um, squids, octopus, cuttlefish, all of those guys. They have similar structures. But no matter what, they have a soft body. And then they had a, a digestive system that is complete. Even even the uh, bivalves, which what does bi mean? Two. 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 So there's two halves. Those are your shellfish, your oysters, your, your clams, um, scallops. For those of you that were here, we saw the, the scallops moving through the water by opening and closing their shell. Okay. Even those have a digestive tract. Those guys are filter feeders. So they, they draw water in through an incurrent siphon, water leaves through the excurrent siphon. Your, your gastropods and your cephalopods are going to be um, typical, actually most of, the, most of them are predators. So um, the, the cephalopods, head foot, those are the, the squid and the octopus, those guys will actually hunt things and then they they uh, use their beaks to bite them like the octopus then injected them with a, a toxin of some sort that paralyzes them yeah they, they do that. So, um, the other the other thing about these guys is they had a complete cardiovascular system for the first time any of the animals we've talked about they had an actual circulatory system so most of them used gills to get oxygen and they they pumped hemolymph instead of blood hemolymph it's a bluish color instead of red because it's it's copper based instead of iron based like us and so um it has a, a little bit of a different color to it so it's like a deep blue or a bright blue? uh no have you ever seen a penny that kind of corrodes Oh, so, like so yeah, yep. Oh, I got one of those things with the sitting in my sitting in my yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like Okay, so these cephalopods had a closed circulatory system like we do. So the hemolymph stayed in blood vessels the entire trip. The the bivalves and the gastropods, they had blood that dumped into a cavity and it was pumped out from there. So it had what's called an open circulatory system. Today we're gonna to move into annelids. Annelids will have a closed circulatory system. Okay, they do have a nervous system as well. It's relatively well defined, not nearly as defined as like the, the squids and the octopus. The squid and the octopus have a, a really pretty intelligent brain, especially for um, the, the level of animal that it is, and they can do mazes and stuff like that. Um, these annelids aren't quite that complex, but they do have a nerve cord that runs the length of their body, and they do have a brain on the head end, a, a small cluster of nerve cells there that would be considered a brain. Okay, so our first group here of annelids which annelid means little rings. Oops, I did not mean to do that. What do you think? Eighth period, I'm gone. Um, 
most of these annelids, so they're made up of lots of different repeating sections. Okay? And they're, they're pretty much identical sections. So that's where they get their name from, little rings. And this is where the earthworm actually fits. A lot of people want to throw it into the uh, roundworm category, but they're a lot more complex. They have a circulatory system. In fact, they have five aortic arches or five little hearts that pump blood throughout their body. Um, most of them have what are called CT or little hair-like structures that help them to move, little bristles. And that's where um, the difference comes for each of these groups. Okay, so our first group is the oligocata, which means few bristles. The oligocata are including the earthworm. And um, basically their movement is involved involving two different types of muscles. They have circular muscles in each segment that can squeeze or, or uh, dilate, get bigger, kind of like our blood vessels do. And then they have long longitudinal muscles that run the length of their body that help them to pull the rest of the body forward as they um, attach their bristles to the ground. Okay, anybody know what worms eat? Uh, dirt. Dirt. dirt, yeah. So they're gonna get organic material from the dirt. And they're actually usually a good sign of quality fertile soil. If you find earthworms in the soil, it usually means that that soil is pretty fertile. And they also are important in uh, natural aeration of the soil. So they're constantly digging tunnels, eating as they go through. Um, these guys live in the soil not generally in water. Whenever it rains and their burrows fill up, that's when they come to the surface. So it's, it's not like they're just coming out because they want to enjoy the rain. They're actually coming out so they don't drown because the water fills up their, their little burrows and they can drown that way. So you see them a lot of times and the robins and the other birds have a heyday after a rain. Um, you also see them if you go down by the track, there's a ton of little earthworms all over the track after a rain and that's why. Each one of these has a hundred or more segments. Actually there's fewer sometimes. Um, <laughs> on your lab on Thursday we're actually going to dissect a worm. I know you did that probably in junior high. Now hopefully yeah, you're actually paying a little more attention to the anatomy of it as opposed to when you're in seventh grade and it was just fun to cut things. Okay, so it's still um, fun to cut things up. It, it is still fun to cut things, but now you actually know what you're <laughs> looking for. So when we cut them open, what you're gonna find is that the digestive tract is very similar to that of a bird, a, a chicken even. Okay, because they're gonna have a crop which stores their food temporarily, and then they're gonna have a gizzard. And the gizzard is a really strong muscular tough organ that grinds the food. And chickens, yes, they eat chicken gizzards. So, what about mollusks? Mollusks don't have gizzards, <laughs> but you don't typically earth, earthworm mollusks or earthworm gizzards. Yeah, people bear the crop and the gizzard to it. Uh, yeah. The crop is more just a storage tank temporarily. The gizzard is, it, it probably moves kind of like the stomach would, except they don't have teeth. And so that's gonna really grind the soil up and bust it up. In a chicken, they eat gravel a lot of times. And the reason they do that, it isn't, so they're getting nutrients out of the gravel. The gravel sits in that gizzard and as it churns, the gravel will grind up the, the corn and stuff like that that they eat. So, uh, of course, these guys are eating more soil as opposed to rocks, so they can bust it up. Because we don't need to. We have teeth. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very similar structure to a bird. And, yeah, because we don't have the stomach here, that's, I would agree that, that these two kind of take up the spot for that. So again, these guys have the closed circulatory system. And so the blood stays within blood vessels the entire trip, all the way through the body. Um, they don't have gills or lungs in this case. 
most of the earthworms just get, get their oxygen by diffusion only through their thin, moist skin. Um, they do have nephridia, which get rid of excess water or waste products, a little bit like our nephrons found in our kidneys. Okay, they just have this nephridia that, that help to do that. Um, neurocontrol, they do have the, the brain towards the anterior end or the head end, so they show cephalization. There's that word again. And they have that nerve cord that you'll be able to see on Thursday runs the length of their belly side. Okay, so you'll be able to see it's a dark nerve cord that runs the length of them. These earthworms are hermaphrodites, but again, they can't fertilize themselves. So they'll have to, to fertilize the eggs of another worm. If you, if you notice the light colored kind of swollen part of the worm, you, you've seen that before. Okay, that's called the clitellum. On there is a seminal vesicles or a seminal receptacles. So they secrete a mucus around that and then the sperm are delivered to those receptacles through that mucus. And so that's how it actually transfers sperm from one to the other. Um, yeah, skip on through that. The polycata, that's the, the next group. These guys have many bristles and these are called bristle worms. You might take a minute to look up uh, bristle worms B-R-I-S-T-L-E. Some of them are actually kind of pretty. Some of them are really ugly. Um, you can even look up sandworms. I know you're gonna end up with pictures of sandworms from Beetlejuice, the old movie. Hey, that's not Whoa, the same. Awesome. Like you love that movie? That, I, oh, you've seen that movie? They look yeah. like sandworms. It used to kind of freak me out when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. These things look awesome. Are you movie? Yeah. Okay, some of the bristle worms. You, um, like this. Yeah, those are from the movie. Yeah. The the bristle worms look like uh, centipedes. Yeah. Yep. A little bit. Mm -hmm. But the centipedes and millipedes are different. Yeah. What's yeah. picture of sandworm? An actual sandworm. Yeah, there's actual sandworms. Whoa. Um, Is that a sandworm? Look up another one. It's kind of cool. It lives in the ocean. It's a feather duster worm. Is that a sandwich? It looks like a sandwich. Yeah. Feather duster worm. You'd think that it's probably more like a cnidarian, but it isn't at all. It's, it's a worm? Yep. Because of its characteristics, Ooh, has a circulatory awesome. system and all that stuff, you go back to mm -hmm. cnidarians, they mm -hmm. didn't have any of that. Just chilling out in the water. Mm. They're just chilling. Okay. The last group is the Harudini. The Harudini are the leeches. And so there's over 500 mm. species of leech. Le uh, some leeches are actually uh, hunters. Okay, they're carnivores. The ones that we think of typically are parasites. So they latch on and they suck, suck the blood out of whatever they're attached to. Um, they actually do use these, they actually do use these still in some surgical procedures because they get rid of some of the swelling around incisions and stuff. So they'll, they'll place them to draw out some of that excess blood around that incision from swelling. It reduces the swelling. Are you talking to yourself, Cole? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Leeches are different than the other two groups because they do not have CT. They are segmented still, but they don't have the CT or the, the little parapodia to help them to move. And a lot of them live just in the water and the mud. So here you can see the CT down at the bottom. What are the analidia, right? What? An analida, yeah. Anal analids. I'll go ahead and play a couple of these. And this describes the difference between the leeches and the earthworm. 
Earthworms and leeches are examples of annelids. Annelids are segmented. Most annelids have external bristles called CT. The pair of CT located on each segment increase traction as the annelid crawls along. It's hard enough to hear these because they're recording just through the microphone. Unlike flatworms and rotifers, annelids have a true coelom, a body cavity formed within the mesoderm. This cushions the annelids' internal organs and allows the muscles to move independently of these organs. Okay, so again, they're like us, but they're coelomates. They have a true body cavity so that their stomach or their intestines aren't directly attached to the, the wall. Otherwise, every time they move, they wouldn't be able to digest their food, or every time they're digesting their food, they're their other body parts would be moving too. So there's a separation there. These organs include both nervous and circulatory system. Oh, wrong button. Within the phylum Arthropoda, segments may look different and have different functions. A small change in the segment can modify it for eating, defense, or reproduction. Okay, now it's weird that they're putting on arthropods on here because we are on arthropods, but it's really focusing on segmentation, which the annelids are all segmented so that they can move easier. Did it again. Okay, so um, the last one I really like is this movement of, of the earthworm, so you can actually see how they move. You know when you're holding earthworms how they elongate and, and stuff, and they're trying to get away. Um, this is actually what's going on when they elongate like that. The earthworm's body is divided into more than 100 segments. These segments make the movement of earthworms possible. First, the worm anchors some of the middle segments by their CT. Circular muscles line the interior body wall of the earthworm. These circular muscles in the segments in front of the anchored CT contract. Contraction of the circular muscles increases the pressure of the coelomic fluid in those segments. This increased pressure causes the segments in front of the worm to elongate. This elongation pushes the front of the earthworm forward. CT at the front of the earthworm then grip the ground. As the segments return to their original shape, the rest of the earthworm is pulled forward. It's kind of a slow so process. Try, um, okay, you're pulling a round earthworm. Uh huh. What are those weird smooth things? The, the, the thicker part? Yeah, thicker and more smooth part. That's the. Oh, really? That's clitellum. That. That's the part that secretes mucus and stuff for re reproduction. So yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that because you can actually see the seminal receptacles on there when you're looking at them. There's, there's little holes. So if you cut them open, cut the open, will it be the same all, all around if you cut it open on any side or any part? Yeah, um, except for the anterior end where you're actually hitting the hearts and uh, the so you know digestive tract. So you can see the head end. You can see. No, I know, but if you roll it, does it matter which way you cut it if you roll it? Oh, yes. Yeah, because the bottom side has the CT, the little hairs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it has a, a true bottom and top. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know that like, you have to cut it. So yes. Do you, do you see this? You see those little guys? Yeah. So that's the bottom side. Oh, okay, but how do you see that on the macular? Just Same thing. Oops. You can see them. Plus, like um, you'll see the, you'll see the uh, seminal receptacles and all that stuff on there, too. So you'll see it with just your blood? Yeah. Okay. So but now you're paying attention to it. Like when you're fishing, you're probably not going to pay attention to that. Yeah. See, my eyes, does you consider your eye to be naked if you have contact with <laughs> Like, it's just... You're looking at something when you're naked on it. Well, yeah, because yeah, it's like putting on a clear rainbow. Uh, Earthworms ingest soil <laughs> as they burrow through it. The muscular <laughs> pharynx sucks soil into hey. the mouth. The soil moves down a tube called the esophagus into a temporary storage area called the crop. The soil passes from the crop into a thick, muscular part of the gut called the gizzard. 
the gizzard grinds the soil, releasing and breaking up organic matter. As the soil passes through the intestine, nutrients and organic matter in the soil are absorbed by the blood. Undigested material leaves the earthworm's body through the anus. Okay, so um, okay, how, long, how long does it take to dig a hole? How far does it go? Not long at all. I don't, I don't think it takes too long. It's like, whoop, and then they just shoot their heads in. The Why do I keep doing that? All right. So, um, let's go ahead and answer a few of these questions just because it's review of annelids and the mollusks. So, why do terrestrial snails and slugs need an environment with high moisture content? Keep their. Okay. Okay. No, yeah. Agreed. Moist. Okay, which of the following are the only mollusks with a closed circulatory system? J. So blood stays, or hemolymph in this case, stays in blood vessels the entire time. What do you guys got? G. G. Is it a G or side. Yeah. Click it! What do you think, Polsky? I think H. H. Oh, yeah. Yep, the squids, the octopi, the cuttlefish. Oh, the octopod is yeah, not a tough octopi. Head and foot. Yeah. Do it. Okay, annelids are dividing into three classes based partly on the number of which of the following. Annelids are divided into three classes based partly on the number of which of the following. So earthworms, so your oligocata, your arudini. C. You think, which one? A. C. B. D. We got them all covered. Somebody's gotta be right. <laughs> I'm gonna go with C, C. Nephridia. Those are the kidney-like things. Um, so ah, CT, ah, the bristles okay, right. that allow them to move. Those Remember, Harudni don't have any. Those are how they classify. Uh, yeah, how many? Whether or not they have CT. Mm -hmm. Parapodia are distinguishing characteristics of which class of annelids? Parapodia. Uh, what? Uh, what are you going to do? A little pair of legs. I'm going to say H. H. Which classes? I've never heard of any of those classes. All I mean H. J. J. You said H. I don't know. H. 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 J. H. No, it's gonna be G. None of those guys It's H. Good, Polly Those are those are your bristle worms. Oh, what? Yeah, got them all right. I'm gonna exit out of here. Are we gonna? End? So, you do not have a homework assignment with analytes. All right, we will do the dissection on Thursday for these guys. We'll move on the next couple of days. Oh, yeah, come yeah, back yeah, to these yeah, guys yeah, why don't we do on Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Why don't we have yeah. Thursday? Oh, we could. That's true. I could change it around. That's, That's not a bad true. thought. Yep. So, um, so we plan on doing that then. Tomorrow I have second period, yeah. So, um, many of you still have assignments to get done for me. Check the ones that I got back that you you think should have been graded but are marked as incomplete. Not the ones that are with no grade, but the ones that have incompletes. There's probably something that I said that you need to finish or do in order to get credit for it. Okay, There were a few, I could tell that people just slopped through it to get answers down. And I have a hard time giving you a complete grade when you just tried to get something so done. So like this one, I got an email, all right? Yeah. Did what you say on Canvas what you? Yes, yeah, I would put a comment. All right. Because it says it's been graded, does that mean it's? Oh, that, what does it say, incomplete or complete? 100 or zero? 
So zero sign means 49 for worksheet heavy. 